Hi everyone, this is Hebba from My Little Journal and today I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks on how to use your app PicFrame. I've shared with you before that I love PicFrame to create collages, different sized photos, to print through my selfie printer. So I wanted to share with you these tips and tricks, my favorite collages, because you guys have asked and I want to share. So um, certain size photos uh, that I really love and always use my pick frame to create. Um, I just put some little examples here, but I love using these types of photos to add into my traveler's notebook, um, especially when I'm using certain sized stamps like this TV stamp. Um, I also was asked how I created these tiny, tiny photos for my map layout. Here's another one that I've been asked a lot about, which is the longer photos, the horizontal but very thin, narrow, and long. I will share with you that one as well. And my go-to three photos, square photos, that I use all the time. I actually have this one, I have this one. I do this all the time. So I'm gonna share with you some tips and tricks and how I use my pick frame also for my project life. Now I decided to do this uh, without a voiceover and not do the whole um, iPhone screen thing. I'm just gonna share with you how I do it because I feel like it's easier for me to speak while I'm doing it and sharing with you, especially that all of you are using it on your iPhone. So hopefully this is okay. I'm not very tech savvy either. So this is how I resize my photos, create these little collages to print through my selfie printer and use them in my traveler's notebooks. Now I have a lot of apps that I use to brighten my photos, to create like a pop of color on a black and white photo. But one of my favorite, favorite go-to apps is the pick frame. When I click on the pick frame, I always go to a certain ratio, which is the three, two. I like that ratio because uh, it's horizontal. I prefer horizontal photos and because it fits perfectly in the selfie printer and it prints it as a four by six. So my go-to for project life is always the first box which is a plain horizontal, you can see that. And whatever I add in there, if I click on it and go to camera roll, uh, grab a photo of my kids, let's say, and I kind of can resize it, move it around, zoom in, zoom out as I please. I always add a border, which I click on style and make my border kind of go surpass that color in white. I past that and I know that my border is the perfect size for my project life. And then you can kind of move around your photo, resize it, whatever the case is. And then obviously I'll click the share and save. And that will save my photo to my camera roll and I can print it through my selfie printer. Now, one reason I like to add borders to my photos is because I like it a lot. <laughs> and with the selfie printer, the selfie kind of crops your four by six. Using this app, even if you did not add a border, it will not crop it to a four by six. But because the selfie printer kind of has these like, um, let me show you real quick. Because it has these perforated lines on both sides, it usually crops your four by six. So when you add a border, it won't do that. So that's my four by six horizontal. If I wanted to do two three by fours, I will click the second box, which you can see you can add two three by fours, print those with a border, and you can see that the two three by fours fit perfectly. And when I print them out, I'll have two three by fours with a border and they will fit perfectly in my pockets in my project life. So those are my two go-tos. I do have a video sharing how to create a six by eight using your selfie printer. 
Very simple technique, but if you want to check that out, I will link it up at the eye for you. So let's move on to my favorite collages for my traveler's notebook. It is on page three. We're still at the same ratio. So I'm going to go to page three and I'm going to click this one down here, which is second to last. And you get six square photos. These are perfect for traveler's notebooks. You can add six photos and print them through your selfie printer. Again, I keep my borders all the time because I like to have borders around my photos. And you can just go ahead and add, if you click on it, it will take you to, to your camera roll and you can fill out those boxes. Print out, I think they're two by twos if I'm not mistaken. Um, you see, like, I don't really look into it very much uh, on the sizes of my photos, but I can measure that for you real quick. So it's about, yeah, two, a little bit less than two by two. And I'm okay with that. Like I said, I'm not really big on measuring my photos. I really don't care what size they turn out uh, as long as I kind of have... Um, that look that I'm looking for. That's what I use to create this type of photo. Um, so I usually just fill out the six. I'll always end up using all six. So, but usually I will use like three on one spread, like these two layouts right here. Um, but to create my smaller, smaller photos, what I usually do is I go back. This is kind of going on the map layout that I created. Let me grab that as well. So I created this map layout with really tiny photos and I wanted to share with you how I did that with this collage or with this app. Now what I did, I went to page four and you can see you have these four types of spreads or collages down on the bottom. Either one, whichever one you click on, is going to work. Okay. So I'm going to remove this just to kind of clear it out. But if you can see here, these lines, you can move them up and down and you can make your own sized photos. And what I did was I literally made my boxes to fit these photos that I wanted to add to my maps. So if I move it up and down, I can make the box as big as I want. Now, what I like to do is control the size of my photos by adding a border. You can always trim off the border, no big deal. But you can see once I added the border, my photos shrunk. And that's what I wanted to be able to create those tiny, tiny photos. Now, once I fill out my collage and print it, my photos are going to turn out really, really small. And that's how I ended up having those smaller photos for my map layout. Very easy, very simple. Um, I always recommend when you're creating using apps or you're resizing using apps, if you're looking for perfection, do it in Photoshop. Don't do it in an app because these apps, you can't really size them perfectly. So sometimes, um, you know, your photo might be a little bit bigger than what you expected. But I, you really get the hang of it. Um, I've been using this app for years and kind of figured out the sizes I'm gonna get when I use these collages in this app. So definitely if you're a perfectionist and you really care how big or small your photos are, I wouldn't use this. I definitely use my uh, laptop or my computer and resize them in Photoshop. Now I also wanted to share how I create my narrow thin photos, something like this, let's see like this layout where I used four photos. They were narrow and small and I added them in these little labels. Um, that is very simple as well. The only thing I do is I change my ratio to vertical. So I'll go to the two, three. And now if whatever I print is gonna print out vertical, not horizontal. And I will go to my first page and choose this one, which kind of creates the four photos. I can kind of um, make my border bigger, smaller, whatever the case is. And for those um, labels, I knew I wanted narrow, thin. And I'm okay with trimming them down a little bit to fit without a border. 
that's fine. This is why I'm using this app. I know I'm not gonna get the perfect size, but I can always trim down my photos. I can always play around. As long as I have the border, it's really gonna help. Um, I also do use this one if I want them to be shorter um, because I can because I can move the line. So this will make it even smaller and shorter, but a little bit wider if you're looking to add your photos a bit a wider, bit. but shorter, if that makes sense. But I always recommend to stick to the collages that work for you. Once you print them out a few times, you kind of get the hang of it. You will find your favorites, and I just stick to mine, honestly. I try different things every once in a while and if it works it works it doesn't work it's not a big deal i don't throw them away i still keep them and use them for a different spread um, until i get the right ratio and then i kind of build on that i guess so uh, definitely recommend it i also did want to share with you the color pop app i've been asked a lot how i do my black and white with a pinch of color like uh, parts of my photo is bl in black and white and then the rest is in color. I use this app to do that. I just, it's really easy to do by the way. Um, all I do is you click on the color pop, you choose a photo. Let's go with this one. It will give you the option of changing the ratio. It will give you the option of, you know, editing it out and stuff, but I'm just gonna go for it. So it switched my photo to black and white. Uh, let's say I want his t shirt to be in color. I will just go over his shirt. Just make sure that you get only his shirt. So you can see I accidentally got his hands. I still didn't get this part of his shirt. But what I'll do is I kind of go over his shirt and then you can click the black, gray, and white, and then go over the parts you do not want in color. And you can kind of zoom in and change that. You can even make your brush smaller and thinner. So you can go into those smaller areas like his fingers right there. And it will change certain spots. This is hard to do while I'm filming, but you kind of get the idea. And if you work it properly, you'll only have his shirt in color and then the rest of him would be in black and white. It's pretty neat. It's a lot of fun. I do it a lot, especially when I want something uh, to pop, like a birthday cake or a balloon or something like that. I like to use this app to do that. And I'll just save it and then add it to my camera roll and then I can print it through my selfie printer. So those are the two apps that I really, really love using uh, before I print through my selfie printer. I also do use the Fonto. Fonto gives you the option to add journaling and it has hundreds of different fonts that you can use. Uh, like I said, I like to do everything on my phone. So having these apps to create all my photos, to edit all my photos, then print them, makes this so much easier for me. Um, all you have to do is choose a photo again. I'm going to choose this one. And all I'm going to do is add my text. So you just click where you want your text. You can still move it, by the way, even after you added the text. I'm just going to add back to school. You can change the color of your font and move it around wherever you like. And all you have to do is save it and print it through your selfie printer. Another app that I really like is the PicTap Go. It's my go-to to brighten up my photos. It's so easy to brighten up photos. I'm just gonna click on one of my kids' photos right here and I have my own saved, my style. These are saved. This, this is, like is my Project Life filter, and I can always still adjust it, even if it's a combination of different filters. I can adjust and make it work for me. Um, another way to do it is filters. I love the lights on. I always go for the lights on. I adjust it. I don't want it to be that bright. And I love the, where is it, Sweet Tooth. And I totally adjust the sweet tooth because it really makes your colors really, really pop and they're really crisp. 
and I adjust it a little bit just to make my colors brighter and crisper. I don't know what like the words are for that. It's just so pretty when you use the sweet tooth. But that's just how you can filter as you please. You can even filter it to black and white. That's what I use to filter my photos before I print them. So it's a combination of I start with Pick Tap Go, then with Fonto if I want to add my journaling or a title or something to my photo, and then I use my Pick Frame to create my collages and print them through my selfie printer. You guys are probably wondering like, ooh, you have a new selfie. Yes, I do. <laughs> my selfie printer broke down after years and years. I think it's been, I've had it for like 11 or 10 years. Um, it was joyful and not very joyful because I, I loved my selfie printer, but, but I was happy that I was able to get the newer version. But that tells you a lot that the selfie printers do last for a long time. So this one's a new one. Love it, it's in white, and I've been enjoying using my new selfie printer. I hope this video answered your questions and was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up, and if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing, and I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye.